Hi, everyone. Welcome to another creative writing webinar and to a new week. It's the afternoon of Monday. Uh, I'm excited to do more creative writing with all of you. I hope you guys all had a good weekend. I hope you did some writing during your free time, hopefully. Uh, a couple of people have sent me stories that they're writing, which is really awesome. I'm always really excited to see what you guys are writing during your free time. Um, I'll show my uh, email address again later, but as always, you can email me your stories at online.learning at delphian.org. Uh, yeah, I love to read those. So keep on sharing them, keep on sending them in. Okay, today we are going to continue working on our stories. The overall plan for the summer is that we're going to keep on doing these creative writing webinars. We're going to keep on writing and working on our stories. And based on what we're talking about in each class, we're going to keep on adding to our stories and making them better, uh, changing things, adding things, fixing things. And my goal is that by the end of the summer, we have stories that we really love, that we've really worked over and that we've learned and we've like added things to them each time. So by the end of the summer, uh, they're in like really good shape. And then I want to get some of those stories that you wrote and put them together and make like a short story collection that we're going to share with everybody who is part of the uh, webinar. So uh, if you haven't started yet, you can start anytime on writing your story. If you've already started, I'm really excited to see what you guys are coming up with. So let's jump into today's lesson. As always, if you have any questions, you can put those in the Q&A box, uh, or if you want to share anything or you have any ideas about writing, you can put those in there too. So let's see, so far, lots of people saying hello. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Glad you guys are all here. Um, let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Somebody says, what's with the racket? I don't know. What do you, I'm not sure what you mean by the racket. If there's some extra noise or something, just let me know. Um, great. So I see that Chloe's here. Mackenzie's here. Um, oh, and Mackenzie has a friend named Ananda. Hi, welcome. <laughs> uh, I see Shanna's here. All sorts of people are here. Um, also, oh, uh, Katya shared uh, their story and I liked it a lot. Thank you for sharing. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, good. So let's get started. Okay, so today we're going to talk more about characters and conflict. And we're going to define what that means in just a little bit, if, you're, if you don't already know. Okay, so as always, remember, these are suggestions, not rules. You guys are writers, you're artists, you can write your stories the way you want. But if you'd like some suggestions, here we go. So, you started writing the first draft of your story. Whether you started with an exciting situation or an interesting character, because remember, those are two ways we talked about before that you can start a story. The most important goal was to get writing, to get some words down on the page. Let's talk about where this story is going. Almost every story in the world has the following three things. One or more characters, goals for each character, and a conflict. That's where you have opposing goals. Uh, each character or the main characters want different things. They come into conflict. They have some sort of fight or disagreement or uh, they're both racing to get to the same thing, but somehow they're opposing each other, which means they're going against each other. Now, I just wanna say, I'm sure if we thought really hard, we could think of stories that don't have all three of these things. That's because so many stories have been written, literally hundreds of thousands or even maybe millions of books and stories exist in the world. And we'll be able to think of exceptions. But usually if a story doesn't have characters, goals, and a conflict, it's pretty experimental or it's pretty much outside of what we would normally consider as a story. Because uh, most of the stories that we're aware of have those three things. Now, if you're up for a challenge, you can try to write a story that doesn't have <laughs> all three of those things, and it should be pretty interesting. Uh, but it might be pretty difficult. To tell a story with no characters would be quite difficult, because even if you start telling a story about, let's say, a forest, and you say there's no characters in this story, I'm just going to describe the trees and stuff, uh, I think you might find that 
the forest uh, starts becoming the character. You might start treating the forest, you know, like it's a, like it has feelings and a communication because how else do you tell a story? Because if you don't have characters and they don't want things and they don't come into conflict with other people or things, there's not really much to talk about. There's not really much to tell people that resembles a story. Uh, if you imagine like the entire life of a person, lots and lots of things happen. But what parts of your day or parts of your life do you actually tell other people about when you tell them a story? If I'm going to say to my friend, oh, you'll never believe what happened. What I'm about to say is going to contain probably people or animals or things. Uh, there's going to be something that you were probably trying to do and then something happened that opposed you or uh, something, you know, really out of the ordinary happened. But I wouldn't say to a friend, like I was gonna tell a story, I wouldn't say, you'll never believe what happened. I went to the fridge to get a bottle of water and there was a bottle of water in there. Your friend would probably go, okay, why are you, tell why are you telling me this? <laughs> because your story might have the character of you, but there wasn't really any conflict. Nothing really happened. Nothing was achieved. There was no, well, there was a small goal. You wanted a bottle of water. But the things that are worth telling usually have some really interesting goals. They have some really interesting conflicts and that, that's what makes them a story worth telling to somebody else in writing or otherwise. Um, let's see, I think there might be a couple questions in the Q&A box, I'm gonna look at that really quick. Oh yeah, one, so Eliana is asking, what if you were not here last class? Uh, good question because we're always welcoming of new people. If you weren't here before, it's totally fine. Uh, what we talked about before, Eliana, was basically just getting your story started, uh, how to just kind of like get an idea for an interesting situation or an interesting character and how to start writing. So um, also we kind of talked about before, it's more important to get started than to, you know, plan everything out, plan everything in your story out, but not actually write anything. It's always better to start writing and start having fun than to spend you know, days or weeks or months planning a story that you never actually write. So we encourage everybody to get started and we're gonna kind of work on these stories as we go. Every writing class, we're gonna to add to them or we're gonna change them or we're going to uh, make improvements to our stories. But if you haven't started a story yet, it's totally fine. We're encouraging you to start today. Okay, cool. Oh. And all of our previous classes, we record them and we put them up on YouTube. Uh, so you can go to the Delphine School on YouTube and you can watch all of our previous classes. There's usually a few days, a bit of a delay as we get them recorded and up onto YouTube. But uh, eventually you can always go back and watch all of them. So it should be a lot of fun. Okay, cool. <laughs> Ron Beer says, Here's an example. You won't believe what happened the other day. I went to the closet to get my shoes and I looked in the closet and there were my shoes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, Ron Beer. It kind of feels like you're like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then you're like, oh, okay. Nothing much happened. <laughs> All right. So almost every story in the world has the following three things. One or more characters, goals for each character, and a conflict opposing goals. Let's go through some examples. So characters are the people in your story, uh, whether that's Harry Potter or Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, or this is Fern from Charlotte's Web. Uh, all of these people are people. They are people that are described really well. You get a really good sense of who they are, what they want, uh, what maybe their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. Um, but they're people that they're the people that the author has chosen to tell a story about. And what's really interesting is that, uh, have you ever thought about this? Think of what if a different person in that same story was the main character? Uh, of course, over here on the right, uh, there's also, uh, the pig in the story. There's also, uh, Charlotte herself and Charlotte's web as a spider. Um, there's other characters in the wizard of Oz. There's the Tin Man and the Cowardly Lion and you know, the Wicked Witch of the West. 
in Harry Potter, there's a ton of other characters that we know really well from those stories. But think about it. Any other one of those characters could be the, the, you know, the main person that the author decided to write about. In fact, uh, one modern type of story that a lot of authors like to write is to take a well-known story and write about it from a different character's viewpoint. There's a really famous series of books that was turned into a musical called Wicked, and that's the Wizard of Oz story told from the viewpoint of the Wicked Witch of the West. Uh, it's pretty famous because that story treats the witch as the main character, and you really get to go inside her world and see what she's like from her viewpoint and why she is the way she is. Uh, if the author of Harry Potter wanted to, she could write a series of books from a different character's viewpoint in that universe. Maybe one of Harry's friends, or maybe one of the bad guys. It might be interesting to see what that world is like from a different set of eyes. So characters are the people in your story. Uh, at, when you start your story, you usually know what character you want to write about, but that can also change. You might find yourself starting off with one character and then start writing another character and you think they're more interesting and you decide to write from that person's viewpoint. You could also write from multiple viewpoints. Uh, there's a lot of books that they change from person to person. Maybe each chapter is told from a different character's viewpoint or maybe each section of the book is told from a different viewpoint, but those are all okay. It's totally fine to do all those different ways of writing. All right. Next up, your characters have to have goals. What are they trying to achieve? So for example, your character could be trying to find a treasure. Maybe there's a lost magical treasure or just a regular treasure chest. Uh, your character could be trying to achieve their freedom. They could be trying to escape from something or get away from the bad guys. Maybe it's not so dramatic. Maybe your character is just trying to become the best runner and they're trying to uh, win the race. Lots of sports stories have that as the goal. The main thing that the characters are trying to achieve is to like win the championship or to you know, win maybe just a big game against a rival school. Uh, there's usually a main big goal for your characters, but there's often other side goals too. Maybe your main character uh, doesn't have a lot of friends, so they go on a magical quest and they're trying to, uh, you know, save the world. But along the way, the side goal is, you know, they're trying to make some friends. <laughs> it's okay to have multiple goals in a story. And some writers consider that, you know, you have to have multiple goals for your character. You can't just have one big, huge goal. That's the only thing that they're trying to achieve. You have to have other little things that they want to achieve also, or else there's not a lot of room for the character to grow. There has to be things that they're trying to improve on or get better at. Uh, I see the Q&A box flashing, so there might be a question there. One second. <laughs> uh, Lydia. Oh yeah, An uh, Ananya says, uh, I love Charlotte's Web. Um, also, <laughs> uh, their sister likes Harry Potter. Yeah, they're great books. Um, Eliana has Charlotte's Web too, and yeah, and Eliana is sharing an example from a book called Bob. I have not read Bob. I don't know what that's about, but thank you for sharing uh, the name of that book. I always like to hear about more books. I add them to my to read list. Okay, good. So um, also, it's really important to think about the villain or the bad guy in your book is a character too. Your villain has to have a goal. You don't want the bad guy in your story if your story has a bad guy. You don't want them to just have the goal of being evil or something. That's not very realistic. In real life, the people that you're going up against or your opponents, that means the people that you are opposed to, they have their own goals. That's why uh, you know, you're know you going up against them in the first place. So in addition to thinking about what are the goals of my good guys or my main characters, what are the goals of the bad guys or my villains? Once you know that, or once you think about that, you can actually have conflict. So in a fantasy or magical story, you know, characters come into conflict and they have their magical battles. 
you have uh, Harry fighting Voldemort in the Harry Potter books. Uh, in a sports book or something, you know, you have characters racing or, you know, trying to win a sporting event against each other. Uh, in an alien invasion uh, or in science fiction, the aliens uh, have their own goal. Maybe the aliens are like, we need a new planet to live on. Earth looks pretty good. The humans have their own goal, which is don't be invaded. Try to continue surviving. These goals come into conflict with each other. Uh, in a sporting book or movie or something, you know, everybody wants to win, but oh, there can only be one winner. So those goals oppose each other. Uh, if you're not really sure what the bad guy in your book should be or who should be opposed to your good guy, you can try to think about, well, what's my character's goal? And then who would try to oppose this goal? So let's say you want to write a story where uh, the character is going to uh, try to find a buried treasure. Well, Instead of just telling a story where all they do is, is go and look for this treasure and they look for it and look for it and there's not really any conflict, nothing really happens, you have to ask yourself, well, who else might be maybe looking for this treasure? Or who might want the character not to find it? Sometimes by just thinking about what a character's goal is, you can think of what would be the opposite goal of that and maybe a character, you just think up of a character from that. Uh, let's say it's nothing so dramatic. What if your book is maybe more like a, a romance where maybe the main character's goal is to fall in love? So uh, to put conflict, to put something exciting into the book, you'd have to ask yourself, well, who would oppose this? Well, maybe your main character is in love with somebody and wants to date them or marry them, but somebody else thinks they love that person too. That's where a lot of like, you know, romance plots come from. There's two different people who both love the, the same other person. So they come into conflict with each other because their goals oppose each other. Maybe also like a romance story could be somebody thinks that they love somebody else and wants to marry them, but the rest of their community says, no, that, that person's bad, you know, don't, don't get with them. Uh, then you have conflict. Those goals oppose each other. So whatever genre you're writing in, whether that's science fiction or fantasy or drama or comedy or romance or a Western, uh, stories get exciting when there's different groups of people or main characters that have strong goals. The bigger the goal, the more exciting it's going to be to see the character try to achieve it. And the more exciting it's going to be when you see other characters trying to stop them or achieve the same goal first. Anytime you've ever read a book or a story that maybe seemed a little bit boring or a little bit weak or the bad guys didn't really make sense, some of the things, some of the questions you could ask yourself would be, well, was, did the bad guy or did the other team or the other side, did they have a strong goal? Did they have a goal that makes sense? Were they trying really hard to achieve it and it made it really exciting when they came into conflict with the main character? If the other side or the other team or the bad guy has goals that don't make sense, uh, if their goals don't seem believable, if they don't seem like something somebody would actually try to achieve, uh, you know, or even if the bad guy, their goal just seems to be bad, it can kind of feel not very satisfying because it doesn't feel very real. Um, bringing our presentation back up here. The, see, the only thing that really determines who the good guy and who the bad guy are in a story is whose viewpoint you're going to tell in a story. What makes a great villain in a story is that they see themselves as the good guy of their own story. No one really thinks they're a bad guy. Uh, of course, there are actions that are morally wrong, but usually the characters in a story, all the characters in a good story, in their own minds, they're all doing the morally right thing. So the good guys, it, they're usually the good guy because the story is being told from their viewpoint. But there's usually the bad guy in a good story has his or her reasons for doing what they're doing. And in that character's own mind, those reasons make sense. Maybe they think that, uh, 
you know, they're trying to, you know, the good guy thinks the bad guy is trying to destroy the world or change it for the worse. But the bad guy, if they're a well-written, good bad guy, they'll be able to explain or justify what they're doing and why it's actually a good thing or how they're changing the world for the better. Um, and that's where the stories get really fun. Uh, some of the best, you know, movies of recent years, some of the most popular uh, stories that you've read or seen in movies, um, when you really get down to it and you think about it, they're really fun when the, when the bad guy is really good and you can almost be like, I kind of get where the bad guy is coming from. <laughs> when the bad guy is just evil for the sake of being evil, people usually say, eh, it's kind of cartoonish. It's kind of like, uh, you know, not, there's good cartoons, but the bad cartoons, the bad guy is just evil for the sake of being evil. It's kind of like, eh, it doesn't seem very much like real life. Because in real life, the bad guys are usually very much believe in what they're doing and they think that what they're doing is right. So the good guys have to stop those people or they have to achieve what they're doing and not let the bad guys stop them. I see some comments coming up in the Q&A box. So you guys might have some questions or some examples. Can't wait to see what you guys are saying. Uh, N really likes Harry Potter. Yeah, it's a great series of books. Um, Ananya asks, does a story always have to end with the good guys or girls winning? Can I write a story where the bad guy wins or is that wrong? Ananya, there is no wrong in writing. <laughs> you can do whatever you want in a story. That's one of the awesome things about telling stories and writing stories is you get to decide what the story is. It's really a, an area where your imagination and your creativity you get to make your own world and put it on the page. And nobody else gets to tell you what's right or wrong. You're the one that gets to decide. And that's one of the things I love about writing. With that said, people that read stories sometimes have certain things that they expect from you. And one of the things that people often expect is they often want to see the good guy or the main character or the good girl, of course, struggle but they usually like to see the main character win in the end. If you have the main character lose, it can be unsatisfying. It can sometimes feel like, wait, why did I read this whole story or this whole book just to see the main character lose in the end? Now, that doesn't mean like in a sports movie or uh, maybe a story about like a competition, that doesn't mean that the main character has to win that competition because maybe there's another goal, which is to become a better person or to get stronger or to become kinder to others. And maybe even if they lose the big game, they achieve those other goals. That can be satisfying. I won't spoil it, but I actually just watched a movie the other night where the main characters are uh, in a competition of sorts and they're trying to win. And in the end they lose, but they end up actually uh, winning in other ways. They kind of, you know, one of the characters becomes a better person. Uh, they learn more about themselves. They uh, have a stronger bond with their family and friends afterward. So it's almost like the fact that they lost the competition or, you know, maybe some other characters or the bad guys or whatever won. And almost it doesn't really matter because they gained so much. They won so much that you don't care that they lost the thing that they were trying to win. Um, but if you have a story that's like a straight up good versus evil, where, you know, the, the good guys are trying to win and the bad guys are trying to like destroy the universe or something. Uh, and if you have the bad guys win, you might have some disappointed readers, <laughs> but again, it's over to you. You might be able to do that in such a way that your readers are like, wow, I'm kind of like sad, but that was also amazing. <laughs> it has happened. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see, AG says, does there always have to be a bad guy or can it just be that the character has to earn money and get a job? AG, you can totally do that. But what if instead of there being a bad guy, what if there are like difficult situations? That's another type of story that often happens. And I think I actually have a slide for that. Let me bring this up and give you an example. Um, 
Yeah, I'm really, I'm really glad you asked that. Even stories where a person, here's an example, is lost in the wilderness have characters with opposing goals. The wild is usually the opposing character in these stories with wild animals or the weather acting as side characters. And the wild's goal is to destroy the person foolish enough to get lost there. While your main character's goal, of course, is to survive. So yes, you can definitely have a story that doesn't have like a classic bad guy or villain. And you can definitely have the, the character's goal to be to earn money and get a job. But because stories are more satisfying and enjoyable when there's a conflict, you can ask yourself, well, what is the conflict? What is the opposing goal that makes your character actually have to struggle or overcome something? So maybe uh, the person's trying to earn money and get a job. Well, is it a really good job? Is it a really awesome job that pays a lot of money and it's maybe really fun? If so, aren't there probably a lot of other people that want that job too. So maybe the conflict isn't like a fight or a bad versus good thing, but it's more like that picture there of the people racing. Maybe the conflict in your story comes from this person is trying to get the job and you choose to tell their story, but other people are trying to get the job too. Maybe the conflict comes from this person meets another person who's actually really nice and really friendly. But then they find out oh, we're both trying to get the same job. Now we're like competitors. Now it's like we're opposing sports teams and we're both going to try to win the game. The game is getting the job. That's one type of classic story. Uh, that's often done a little bit in, I've seen that in various uh, romance movies and books where uh, two people meet and they kind of like each other and they find out they're both trying to achieve the same thing. And that's the conflict. They like each other but they also are both trying to get the same job or they're both trying to achieve the same thing. And they kind of have to figure out, wait, can we still be friends or can we be in love or are we enemies? And neither one is like a bad person, but they're both going for the same thing. So I hope that helps. Um, let's see. Haley says, if I make the bad guy defeat the good guy, uh, how can I continue the story? Well, maybe that's not the end of the story. If the bad guy defeats the good guy, maybe that's really kind of the start of the story. Maybe the good guy has friends or assistants or helpers that are gonna continue the fight. Maybe your story really starts with this person is supposed to save the world. Maybe they're like King Arthur. Um, but King Arthur at the start of your story gets defeated by the villain and then maybe Guinevere or somebody else has to stand up and be the new, you know, has to wield Excalibur, has to defeat evil now that King Arthur has fallen. That's a story I would read. Um, but yeah, there's always ways to continue the story. It's kind of, it could even be, you could tell a whole story where at the end, the good guy seems to lose, but then it's a cliffhanger. It sets up your next story where somehow they're gonna, you know, the good guys will have to carry on. They'll have to win even though the main character lost at the end of the first book. Uh, you try to make it not too sad. Not <laughs> You try to make it so that your reader does want to keep on going. You don't want your reader to go like, what? My favorite character died? Like, oh, and they, they throw the book away. Uh, there's ways to make the good guy lose and still have your reader want to keep on reading to not like lose your reader. Um, Shanna asks, I'm making a book that is four chapters and 8,000 words. Is that classified as a book or a short story? Uh, Shanna, usually the very smallest number that you see thrown around as a book is, believe it or not, 50,000 words. 50,000 words is considered like a short book. Uh, the first Harry Potter novel, I believe, is like 76,000 words. And even the first Harry Potter book isn't very long if you look at it like on a shelf. It's not uh, a super long book. Um, a longer book could be more than 100, 200, several hundred thousand words. Uh, like a grown up novel that you see on a bookshelf or like one of the really, one of the bigger Harry Potter books, those have a couple hundred thousand words in them. Uh, 8,000 words would still be a uh, short story. Um, let's see. 
Yeah, uh, Mackenzie asks, I think there's several people watching with Mackenzie, so I'm not sure which person asked, but uh, if there's a series, can one of the books have a good person lose at the end and then the next one, he or she wins? Definitely, yeah. We were just talking about that a little bit. You could have the good guy lose or good girl lose at the you know, end of one and then they maybe come back and win in the next one or somebody else on their side wins in the next one. Totally fine. There's no rules about what you can or can't do. You get to make the rules in your own book series. That's what's exciting about it. Uh, I'm just reading one of these questions here and asked, why do many people always expect the ending of the story? Is it because there are so many books that have these backbones or uh, that is what these people expect? I think I understand your question. Um, are you saying sometimes when people can kind of guess the ending or they kind of expect or know what's going to happen? And I would say, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like there are a lot of main ways to tell a story that are very well known amongst people who write books and who write the scripts for movies. So if the people writing these stories are using kind of one of the classic normal ways to write a story, people that have read a lot of books or seen a lot of movies, they can sometimes guess what's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> once you start teaching uh, how kind of stories work, you know, yeah, sometimes I'll be reading a story, I'll be watching a movie. In my head, I'm, I'm not trying to, but in my head, it's kind of going like, oh, okay, I see what's going on here. <laughs> uh, you know, you'll sometimes be able to guess what's going to happen. And then you watch the movie and it's still fun. You know, you, 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 know, you see uh, maybe early on you go, oh, okay, I, I know who the bad guy is going to be. Like maybe it's a secret bad guy, but you go, oh, okay, I get it. You know, because you've seen this kind of movie before and you see where they're going with it. Um, so you guess it and you're right, but that's fine. Um, it's just like, I, you know, if you, if you cook a lot or you bake a lot, you might've you know, baked and eaten a lot of chocolate chip cookies, but who's going to turn down a chocolate chip cookie? They're amazing. Everybody loves chocolate chip cookies. I'm not going to say no to a chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> All right. Um, for our activity today. Oh, I'm sorry. One more question here. Ananya asks, is it okay to leave a story at a cliffhanger? Will that really make people think or will it just annoy, uh, will, it no, will it annoy them? Well, it depends on how you do it. Um, I've read a book before that it really just ends in like the middle of a scene and it's like to be continued and you're like, what? Like I'm here at home, I'm not at the bookstore. I'm not, ugh. you know, like that can be annoying. But you can have something exciting happen and leave it on a bit of a cliffhanger but also at the same time, wrap up a lot of other parts of the story. I've read books where maybe the bad guys get away and they steal something of the good guys, but the story still ends at the same time. So you're kind of satisfied with what happened, but there's also like, hey, we're going to have to go get that thing back. That's fine. Uh, I would say it might be best to make a mixture of the two where you do kind of end your story, but you definitely give yourself like a where the story is going to go next that can lead the person to, they wanna keep on reading. They're like, okay, now I'm ready for the next one. But I also feel like, ah, oh, good. I gotta see the end of that story. Now I'm ready for the next one. If you kind of just chop off the end of the story and you go, whoops, cliffhanger, gonna have to go get the next story. People can be, that can be annoying. If, you, if they feel like you just kind of stopped in the middle of the action, they're gonna be like, well, I want the end of the story. <laughs> okay, cool. So let's get to our activity. So for this, uh, I would like you to have um, in another tab open like Google Docs or maybe have Microsoft Word open or another Word you know, uh, type program on your computer. Or you can do this with uh, you know, pencil or pen and a piece of paper. Whichever one you wanna do is fine. Because if you open up like another tab on your computer, you can continue listening in. If you have a pencil or pen and piece of paper, then you can still see what I'm showing on the screen right now. Okay, so there's my email address, online.learning at delphian.org. And I'm leaving that up there so that you guys can share your stories. Or, you know, if you finish something, please share it with me. I'd love to read it. Or if you're in the middle of something, uh, you can show me a work in progress. If you have any questions or you'd like any help, 
feel free to send that over and I'll take a look at it. So for today, we're going to talk about these main questions here that we uh, talked a little bit about. So who is my main character? What are their goals? Who are my other characters? What are their goals? And why will these goals oppose each other? So if you were in our last class, uh, I started making up a silly idea for a story just as an example, but uh, I'm having fun with it. So I'm gonna keep on going with it. And my silly idea was a person who can give other people superpowers by cooking and feeding them food. So this person makes a pot of spaghetti. When they feed other people that spaghetti, it gives those people superpowers. I know it's silly, but I like it. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to use for this example. So who's my main character? We can kind of just work on this a little bit. Um, so I think, so my main character is the person who uh, gives other people superpowers. Now, that doesn't have to be the main character of my story. That's why we're kind of working on this. Um, what if my main character is the villain who is fighting against someone going around giving other people superpowers? That could be an interesting story. Because what if this person's like, whoa, 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 whoa. You can't just go around giving people superpowers. The world can't just have tons of people with superpowers. That could be dangerous. So maybe the villain is like a police officer or somebody that wants to, maybe they're like a government uh, agent. You know, they're maybe they're, like if you watch the Marvel movies, maybe they're like somebody like Sh from S.H.I.E.L.D., like Nick Fury, who's saying, whoa, 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 whoa. Stop making all these new superheroes and supervillains. This is dangerous. Stop feeding people your, your magical food. Um, maybe my main character is a family member of the person giving out magical food. That one's not as interesting to me, but this is kind of why we do this exercise. And I hope you guys are doing this at home right now with your own ideas. Um, it can just be interesting to be about like, whose viewpoint should I tell the story from? Should I tell it from, you know, there's a lot of stories where it's not the mo maybe the most powerful person who you're telling the story from. Like for example, in the Sherlock Holmes books and stories, the stories are not told from the viewpoint of Sherlock Holmes. It's Sherlock Holmes's assistant, Watson, who actually tells the stories. So the main character of your story could be the assistant or the brother or sister or the friend of the person who's like magical or really good at something. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, and as Ron Beer says here, some books have the viewpoint of multiple characters. So I could tell my story here and I could say, I'm going to write this book and I'm going to have the person with magical cooking powers the person trying to stop them, friends and family members. Maybe I'm gonna write the story from all of their viewpoints. That's okay too. But it can be good to figure out, you know, what are, uh, you know, who are these people? What are their viewpoints? Um, let's see. Just checking the Q&A box again really quick. Um, Shanna, I'm sorry to hear that you lost your progress in your story. Um, I highly recommend using like a program, like a computer program where you can save your writing as you go. Um, I use Google Docs because I don't even have to hit like save. It just kind of automatically saves as I write. Uh, but you can use lots of other programs too. And I'm sorry to hear that you lost your progress, but uh, yeah, try writing it in, in like a computer program that'll save as you go. That's the main way. I think we can make sure we don't lose what we write. Okay, so first off, who's my main character? Those are some possible main characters. What are their goals? Well, that's a good question. 
I started out with this idea of a person who can cook food that gives other people magical or like superpowers. But now I'm thinking to myself, so what is that person's goal? So let's say my main character, um, let's say it's a girl. And um, so I'm, I just need to think of a name here. Let's say her name is uh, Nina. Let's say Nina loves to cook and wants to be a professional chef. That is her main goal in life. But every time she cooks for someone, she gives them magical powers accidentally. How can she be a chef if she gives out superpowers every time she does her job. Can you imagine going to a restaurant and the chef is accidentally giving everybody superpowers just by cooking food that they ordered? I think that's a bit of a problem. I think that that could make an interesting story by having this person who their goal is to be a professional chef, but they give out superpowers every time they cook. Uh, I would be kind of afraid for, for cooking, you know, for people at a job. If I was a chef and I knew that I was going to give out superpowers, I'd probably be like, I can't cook for people. What if that guy out there that I'm cooking for is a bad guy and he's going to start doing bad things if, he, if I give him super strength and the ability to fly? I probably can't be a chef anymore, right? So our character here, Nina, has a goal, but they have a problem. So other characters... And specifically, somebody who would have an opposing goal. Um, how about another, let's see, who could this other person be? Um, Nina's rival at cooking school was another chef named, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I got to think of a name here. Let's just say Lisa. Lisa hated that Nina was so good at cooking. But now she's suspicious of how people got superpowers after eating food Nina cooked. She wants to be the best chef in the city and she wants to stop Nina from giving people superpower. Oh, that would probably go under the, the next part, the goals. <laughs> um, let's see, let me, I'm gonna cut that. What are their goals? All right, so there we go. So I've got my main character now. I've got what their goal is. I've got another character who has an opposing goal. So why will these goals oppose each other? Well, now it's the kind of the story is writing itself at this point. Um, Nina is trying to figure out how to open her first restaurant and cook for people while Lisa is trying to stop this from happening. She feels Nina is dangerous and she will be helping the city by stopping her. her. Lisa feels Nina is dangerous and she'll be helping the city by stopping her. Okay, so now we have two characters who both feel that they're doing the right thing. Uh, Nina wants to, you know, be a chef and like make delicious food for people. Um, Lisa is trying to protect the city and stop her. But from Nina's viewpoint, Lisa's probably a bad guy. From Lisa's viewpoint, Nina is the bad guy. So honestly, I could actually write this story from either character's viewpoint. And then they would be the good guy and the other person would probably be the bad guy. Uh, and really it's up to me to decide which one is more interesting? Which one do I want to write the story about? So all of you at home, I hope that you were writing this down too for your ideas. Again, it was, who is my main character? What are their goals? 
who are my other characters, what are their goals, and why will these goals oppose each other? So if you started writing your story, I think it would be well worth your time to write these questions down and actually spend a few minutes thinking about it and writing this down. You might find interesting new things happening in your, in your story as you try to answer this. Maybe a new character just popped up in your mind that you didn't think about before. Or maybe you just figured out for the first time why the bad guy is actually bad. So I hope that, that was helpful to you. Uh, it looks like we are out of time. So thank you all for watching today. Uh, I will see you later this week for another creative writing class. And we will see you tomorrow and the rest of the week for every other webinar that we're doing. So thank you all for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, as always, if you'd like to learn more about writing, uh, Heron Books has lots of awesome writing courses. I've done these courses. I've taught them to my students. Uh, I think you should check them out. They teach you about grammar, spelling, punctuation, all kinds of amazing things that you need to be an awesome writer. That's at heronbooks.com. All right, I'll see you all next week or later in the week. <laughs> Bye.